What's up everybody, JJ here, and Creality has finally entered the race of multicolor 3D printing with a giant 3D printer here. This is the Creality K2 Plus. I've been printing on this machine for a few weeks now and have a lot to say about it. Let's get right into it. So first off, we gotta cover the specs. This thing has a massive build volume, 350 millimeter in every dimension, X, Y, and Z. This rocket is a full 350 millimeters tall to give you the size comparison of just how much you can print here. And it has two parts to it, so it makes it even bigger when the rocket blasts off. And this gives you a reference of that 350 millimeters in the X and Y. This fully fills the build plate. This multi-board plate is so big. So you could really do a lot of printing on a machine this size. And this is both a big and fast machine. They throw out some specs of maximum speed and acceleration, but it's really gonna be print dependent. I did a calibration print, printing out a Benchy and a calibration cat on both this printer, the K1C, the Ender 3 V3, the Bamboo A1, and the Bamboo P1P. We're gonna cover that in the comparison section. But this one was the fastest out of the bunch. This printer comes with two built-in cameras, one on the front corner so you can monitor the build chamber and one on the print head so that it can do print calibration. If you run it with calibration, at the start of a print, it'll print two test files. It does a flow calibration and input shaping, which is really useful if you're changing filaments a lot. That way it will auto calibrate for that filament you're printing with. Another unique feature is that it comes with closed loop servo motors instead of the normal stepper motors. So a closed loop control system has the control signal go from the controller to the motor and then back so that it won't lose any steps. You shouldn't get any layer shifts. Those motors are also connected to a self-tightening belt system. So the core XY belt system here is self-tightening. So you shouldn't run into any issues down the road of after years of printing on here, the belts should self-tighten themselves and keep working really well. Both of those systems really should help with long-term reliability of this printer, something I can't really test in two weeks of having this printer. And those motors are also more powerful and quieter. It is a more expensive than a simple stepper motor, but this is an expensive machine coming with really nice parts. It's a brand new extruder in there with a brand new unicorn nozzle. This is similar to the nozzle, the unicorn nozzle that's in the Ender 3 V3 and the K1C, but this one does have a bit of a longer melt zone, so it isn't compatible with those other unicorn nozzles. This should help it really melt some plastic. They have their flow rate rated to 40 millimeters cubed per second for ABS. Since this is a multicolor printer, that extruder also comes with a blade and the filament runout sensor right next to the extruder gears. That way you're using all of a spool all the way down to the last inch of it versus if the filament runout was up here, then you'd be losing a lot of filament that's wasted in the line. And that blade being able to cleanly cut off this filament means you can swap out spools really easily. I can take this and pull it out and it's already cleanly cut, ready to load into a different machine. On most printers that don't have a filament changer like this, you have to pull out the filament and then you should cut it off with a pair of snips. So a big benefit of this printer is just how easy it is to use. Say for example, I wanna print something with this yellow filament. All you have to do is open up the top, grab the filament you wanna change out, and just slide it out like that. You don't have to go in there and tell it to retract, tell it to extrude the new one. It knows that a filament was just removed. Put that in there, grab your new spool of filament, insert it into the tube. It automatically pulls it in there, gets it in the right place. You can close the top. And now on the screen here, I can tell it exactly what filament I just loaded. Click on this settings, filament. It's filament number three we just changed out. You can change it. It is a generic, it's Creality brand or generic are your two options. This is a PLA. There it is up top. Then you can change color. This is one screen I don't like. I am colorblind and I wish there were labels or if it was a color wheel, that'd be easy. The yellow I'm pretty good at, but some of these greens and reds and browns are really difficult to tell apart. So hit OK there. Now it has loaded in the new filament. So I can go here. So I can go here to our print files, go back, say I want to print this one. Originally I printed it in white with blue eyes, and over here it tells you what it's translated to. So the white in the picture here, I want to be a black, so then I tell it to print. And that's just how easy it is to change filaments and start a print running here. Another big benefit of the chamber heater and the temperature monitoring that happens inside of this chamber 
is that I can leave the doors closed on PLA prints. It wants to keep the chamber under 35 Celsius for PLA prints, and it will do that. It will ramp up the fans on the back of this printer to keep the temperature at that level. Normally on most enclosed printers, you do wanna keep the door open and the top off, but on this one, you can keep it closed. It keeps the inside a lot cleaner. All the dust that's landed on the top here is not gonna be landing on the build plate inside there. Another interesting thing I did notice is that it does track the amount of filament on a spool with the compatible RFID tag. I don't know why it's doing that or what the real benefit is. Maybe in the future in the slicer, it could tell you how much filament you have on each spool and if you wouldn't be able to print something with how much filament is left on that color. Their slicer has been given a full overhaul since the K1 printers were launched. This is now based on Prusa slicer versus the older version was based off of Cura. I am a big fan of Cura, but I know a lot of people like the Prusa slicer, bamboo slicer, orca slicer side of things. This one is way similar to orca slicer than Cura. It makes it really easy to use the multi-material functions. And I think they make monitoring all of your Creality printers really easy. This is something I think Bamboo could still improve on their Bamboo Slicer. With Creality Slicer, they make it really easy if you did have a bunch of cre compatible Creality printers, you can slice one object and send it to anything that's compatible with that print profile. Now it's time to compare print quality between all of these machines. So I printed the same STL, this Calibration Cat, and a Benchy on each of these printers. I use the default profile on all of these printers, which does include the same infill and wall settings. Our fastest printer here was the K2, coming in at 50 minutes. The K1C was a little bit slower at 52 minutes. The Bamboo A1 was next at 59 minutes. Next up is the Ender 3 V3 at one hour and two minutes. And then the P1P was last at one hour and five minutes. All of these are very close. If you're doing a ton of printing, and a few percentage points of speed is really a determining factor, then yes, the K2 would be faster. And this is using the default print speeds for all of them. If a few minutes difference is really that big of a deal for you, you could go in there and probably tune in these speeds to make it a little bit faster. But I know most people are gonna be using default speeds here, so that's where I was comparing all of these with. Now, an important thing to remember when comparing the quality of 3D prints is that lighting really matters, so I'm using the same lighting setup here. So if I had a harsh, straightforward light, the printing defects start to go away, versus a harsh light from above can really highlight a lot of issues. I am using pretty harsh lights here so that we can really see all of the defects. So here's the print on the K2+. Plus. The flat surfaces aren't the cleanest of prints here. I'm not sure exactly which issue would be causing that. Now we move on to the K1C. In some ways, I do think it is better here. When it comes to print quality, I do think the flat surfaces are slightly better on this printer. And it was only slightly slower at 52 minutes. Next up, we've got the Ender 3 V3. This one was 10 minutes slower at one hour and two minutes. I do think there's slightly sharper edges here on the top lip of the boat, and a bit less of those horizontal defects that we're seeing on the K2. These Creality prints are using Creality's Hyper PLA in blue. Then when we move to the Bamboo printers, I used Bamboo Lab's basic PLA, Cyan. I wanted to use each company's own brand of filament, so if their profiles are slightly tuned better for their printers, it should give them the best possible results. This first result here is the P1P. I do think it has a bit of a sharper edge here on the top railing of the boat. Next up, we've got the Cali Cat, and there are a bit more of these vertical fine artifacts seen on this print. They are faint and really mostly show up on flat surfaces like this. It has those vertical lines, but it doesn't have the horizontal lines that we saw on the Creality prints. Overall, still really good quality here. Next up, we've got the Bamboo Lab A1. Might be the winner for best quality. It's got sharp edges on those details, maybe a little bit of ringing evidence on the front ports of the boat, but definitely less vertical fine artifacts and those horizontal issues. But the calibration cat really shows off that the vertical fine artifacts are way improved from the Bamboo P1P. It still has some defects around the ears of the calibration cat. Different print features are printed at different speeds, so that wh that's why some layers can have slightly different issues like this. So here is the comparison between Bamboo A1 and the Creality K2 Plus. Does have some slight wispy stringing, but that's really not that big of an issue on a 3D print. 
This is a comparison that favors the A1 because it is an open air printer designed for PLA printing. I do think the Bamboo A1 wins when it comes to absolute quality, but that printer can't do a lot of things that the K2 can do. It doesn't have an enclosure, so you won't be able to print ABS or ASA. It is a smaller printer, so you are missing a lot of the benefits of having a large volume printer. So you can't print as many things as you can on the K2 Plus. This is a good example of why the Creality Slicer needs more profiles. This green crystal I printed on the K2 Plus using their generic PETG profile. This orange crystal was printed on the Bamboo Labs A1 Mini, and they have a dedicated profile for transparent filaments. And it did turn out way more transparent. Here is an example of it sitting on a light to see how the light diffuses through the model. And it looks a lot better on the print using a clear PETG profile. The profiles they have already are a really good start, but they need to keep going with that and expand it to more filaments. Next up, I printed this Vortex model in black ASA. ASA is the one filament that usually gives me the most issue with warping, and these fit together really well. This bottom layer is also not the easiest shape. Usually small points like this are the easiest thing to have warping issues. But they stuck perfectly, no glue stick or adhesive needed. It is impressive that the spiral mechanism didn't warp out of place in any way. The heated chamber really did a great job making sure there was no warping on this print. Next up, I did a first layer test. This is a 0.2 millimeter tall layer at a full 350 by 350 millimeter square. This is easily the best first layer test that I've ever done. It does have a little bit of this waviness in the middle as if it could have been backed off slightly, but with a textured PEI plate, this does make sure it really adheres into the PEI. I think this is a really impressive test result, especially on a print bed this large. If you are interested in Perfect First Layers, check out my podcast, Perfect First Layer. It's a bi-weekly podcast focusing on answering questions from the community, anything from beginners to experts. I'll link the podcast in the description, or you can search for Perfect First Layer on anywhere you get your podcasts. This Halloween flexible T-Rex 3D print is a perfect example of why I love multicolor 3D printing. Automatic layer changes like this save so much filament, but you don't have to go in there and manually swap the filaments. Every time the printer changes filaments, it needs to poop out a little bit of filament to make sure the line is fully purged from one color to the next. So every color swap creates a poop like this. And if you have more than one color per layer, then you have to poop every single color change on every single layer. So a three color print like this only transitioned colors twice and thus only needed to create two little poops. But a more complex multicolor object can easily create double or triple the material in poop as actually goes into the 3D model. I don't love all that waste, and it makes the prints take way too long to do three or four changes per layer. Since there's no such thing as a perfect printer, there's always going to be some downsides. And I think the biggest downside to this printer is its biggest feature. It's so big. 350 millimeters cubed is a huge build volume, but it comes with a big heavy printer to go with it. So two and a half feet front to back, left to right. So maybe a full four feet tall from the table it's on to where the filament CFS opens up. So that's something to think about of where you're gonna put a printer this large. The other thing is the weight. On the back of the K2 Plus, it says it's 32 kilograms. On the CFS, it says 4.5 kilograms, plus the four spools you load in there, which could be four more kilograms. That's a ton of weight and really not comfortable for one person to lift. It's such a big, heavy printer. It's one of those you put in one place and it just kind of stays there. It does require a lot of dedicated space for a printer of this size. Something small like the A1 Mini could be put on a simple bookshelf. You just slide some books to the side and you could fit that thing in almost anywhere. But at this price point, it's not really targeting the average consumer. This is more of a business, someone who's dedicated to the hobby, someone who doesn't mind dedicating enough space for an awesome printer this big. I just wanted to put the weight and real dimensions of how much size you need because of looking at a picture on screen, it's easy to think you could fit one of these in your house and then you get it at the front door and it is a lot. Another downside to this is that this multicolor thing from B Creality is really new. So there aren't many of their filaments that come with the RFID tag right now. And I think it's one of those awesome features of being able to just load a spool in there and then the software knows what color it is, exactly the print profiles to use. I did ask them if they would thought about tagging up with Polymaker or Sunloose, Overture, some other filament manufacturers to get these tags on more filaments out there. 
They said currently there's no plans for that, so it is limited to only the newer Creality spools, which do have those tags. So there's just not as many filament options here when you compare it to Bamboo Labs, which has been working on it for several years. The only real print issue I have had with the CFS is with slightly bent cardboard spools. So with most cardboard spools that are fairly rigid, they say it is compatible. But if it does have a bit of a bend in there, which is easy to happen with a cardboard spool, it can have some issues when it's trying to retract the filament. So a solution there is to print those rings that go around the edge to add some rigidity to the spool. So in conclusion, I think this might be my new favorite printer. This thing is so big and so easy to use that you can just print anything on here. I can get huge, huge PLA prints. High temperature ASA prints work great. And anything from this all the way down to small prints can all print just as well on here. At high speed, the filament changer on top makes changing spools really easy, which is a big benefit. If you want to keep an eye on more printing that I have done and will continue to do, make sure to subscribe and check out my YouTube shorts. I've got a lot more things planned that I want to print on this machine that aren't going to get a full dedicated video like this. I usually cover those in the shorts. If you are thinking about buying a printer this holiday season, I do have affiliate links down below. Those really help the channel out at no additional cost to you. And I will have any sales or coupons. There are a lot and they keep changing this holiday season, but for this Black Friday, I will try to keep that updated down there to get you the best price, and those do really help the channel out a lot. While this is a really exciting printer, I think it makes me even more excited for what they're going to do in the future. This is a big, high-end, top-of-the-line 3D printer, but if they made it smaller, a regular K2, or any other printers that are using this multi-material system could be really great options for the more budget, normal audience. If you do have any more questions or things I forgot to cover, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to help you out. As always, go out there, create something amazing, and I'll see you in the next video.